All right, hey guys, I'm back again, and this video is specifically um, going to be a part of my college slash engineering videos that I started a while ago, like the series I started a while ago. And over a couple, over the past couple of months, I've gotten a whole bunch of questions from that video, and I'm going to use this video to answer those questions as well as um, just give you some random tips on different stuff in college and stuff that should help you along the way. If you are in engineering or actually most of these tips apply to just college in general and whatever major you may be, this most likely could help you. So just listen up. Let me go ahead and get started. Um, the first set of questions that I got were from Jolie Flay A. And um, she asked me a whole bunch of some a good amount of questions that were pretty good. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with that. First question is, um, how did you study or what were your study patterns in school? And that's a really good question. So my first advice in I guess studying is just being very organized and um, the first week or of school you get you know a syllabus handed to you from each of your classes. And usually what I did was um, I made sure to gather all my syllabuses together. I uh, got a calendar for the semester and wrote down the due dates as well as mostly exam dates on my calendar so that I know exactly what's due or when you know, an exam is coming up for the rest of the semester and I don't have to keep you know asking around, oh wait, do we have a test next week or you know looking back at my syllabus. So I had everything on my calendar. That's the first thing I would tell y'all to do. It really helps a lot, especially like every time you wake up, you know, you see that you're like, oh, I don't have any exams this week. Oh, I have two exams next week, that kind of thing. So I did that for my freshman year and I kept doing that all through college and it really helped me. Um, so studying, I usually study a week before an exam. I think the most I ever studied before an exam was maybe like two weeks. I don't even think I did that very often, but usually about, you know, five to seven days before the exam itself. And um, yeah, just basically, I mean, every class is kind of different. You know, you kind of have to judge after the first exam and see how, you know, the teacher uh, tests, you know, tests the students. And then you can kind of have a better understanding of how to study for that particular class. But, you know, just reviewing all the material that the professor wants to. And also, a very, very good um, advice for y'all is if you have, make friends, basically friends that are older than you that have taken the classes before and just even ask your you know classmates do you have past exams because I don't honestly don't know what I would have done throughout college if I did not have you know previous exams from the last you know the last semester just to go over because most of the times they're they might be similar or at least they provide like a really good uh, study aid in studying for an exam so get past exams um, get you know a calendar and mark down all your uh, due dates and exam dates so that you can plan ahead and not you know fall back and yeah study in advance that's pretty much what i'm going to say for that question so number two what motivated you to keep or what mo what motivated you or kept you going i'm going into my sophomore year of college and i've already thought about changing my major i'm majoring in biomedical engineering by the way okay so what motivated me? Um, motivation. I just, I don't know, can't really explain, I don't know what exactly motivated me. It's just kind of like I'm the type of person, if I start something, I'm going to want to finish it. Even though, I'm not going to lie, I think it was my sophomore year, I really wanted to switch majors to petroleum engineering. And even at the time, I wanted to switch to, um, I wanted to do pharmacy, like, yeah. And, um, but then I was just, cause I, at that time I wasn't really liking it, it was kind of hard and I didn't really see, you know, I didn't really enjoy it, so just kind of like, uh, I don't know if I want to do this anymore, but, um, I just kind of had the idea that, look, I'm in a major where even if I, you know, I don't necessarily, I may not necessarily like exactly what chemical engineering is all about, or whatever major you're in, but I know that, you know, with this degree, I can do a whole, you know, a broad uh, scope of things, you know, afterwards. And, um, like, for example, I'm not even really going to be doing, uh, I'm not really going to be in a chemical engineering role. I'm, you know, doing, I'm going to be working as a petroleum engineer. So, 
Um, that's one thing that got me, kept me going was that the fact that I really wasn't wasting my time, that you know this education that I was getting is going to take me somewhere. And um, also just the idea that nothing really good or worth it in this life comes easy. So you have to work hard regardless of what you're doing. Whether you want to be an artist or you want to be you know, a musician, you have to, everything is not going to be easy. And even if, you know, sometimes they're going to come where you are like, oh God, I don't, you know, this is hard. I'm not, I don't even like it. But you just have to keep in the back of your mind that nothing good comes easy. And if it's really worth it, it's gonna take you know some time and some effort and hard work so that's what kind of got me kept me motivated and what I would just say to you because you say you're trying to you're thinking about switching your major just really think about it and think about like, what think about more of your future what you see yourself being if you see yourself you know enjoying uh, you know whatever you want to get into with that major then stay with it because it's gonna get you there but if you don't even think that you want to, you know, how do I say it? If you, if you don't think you want to do anything with regards to engineering, then I would probably say you should switch your major to something else just because it'll probably make you happier in the long run. But, um, like, for me, when I looked ahead and I saw what I could get from my major, I knew it was worth it. That's why, I, you know, it kept me going on. But if you don't see yourself even working in any type of engineering field, I obviously would switch your major just you know to make you happier in the long run so the next question was do you have any advice on being social i feel so alone because none of my friends none of my close friends are majoring in engineering um they don't understand my pain and i can't vent to them <laughs> this is a very funny question because uh yeah a couple a good amount of my friends were not engineering and um although you know, I had a, a good amount of friends too that were engineering, but I can understand what you're what you're coming from. But as far as where you're coming from, but as far as advice on being social, honestly, I would tell you to join organizations that you actually find an interest to. If you're African, you know, join ASA. If you're um, into a specific sport or a specific hobby, you know, find a club and join that and that's the easiest way to meet friends that are like you or have the same interests as you and um, you know it'll just help you know you being it'll just give you more options as far as like you know hanging out with different types of you know people that are similar to you and uh, having fun on the weekends with those people and whatnot that's kind of what I did I know I joined ASA and most of my friends are were in ASA and you know I most of my free time was spent doing some type of ASA event and whatnot and traveling to different schools different ASA conventions and things like that so that's where that's probably a good chunk of my fun came where a good chunk of my fun came from you know in college so I would my advice on being social would be join organizations clubs and um, that you're actually interested in and yeah about fe feeling alone because none of your friends are engineering um i mean i'm sorry but you know that's kind of how life is but um i'm sure you can find some friends that are in your you know classes and stuff that you could probably vent to i was lucky because one of my close friends most a couple of my close friends were in my major so we could vent to each other every day which we did so yeah next question is um uh did you go to a big state school or like a smaller school that isn't tier one um i personally went to a large school but i'm worried that my courses are more will be more rigorous in con contrast to smaller institutions okay i answered this question already like on the comment but i just want to answer it in front of everyone so that you know it helps somebody that might have the same question um i went to a big school i was texas a and let me show my little ring i can say it now because i graduated but yeah giggle yeah anyways I'm just, a lot of people ask me about this ring all the time on my videos but i just never answer but yeah i went to a and and uh it's a big school it's like i think fifty thousand people or so i don't remember what it is now and what I would say with that question is go wherever you think you can excel the most. Honestly, like 
I don't even know how to explain it. Like, there are some smaller schools that are really good, and obviously the biggest, the big schools are good too. Or they're known for engineering. Like, I've come to learn that where you go, I mean, AM is great because of the networking and everything like that. But you can go to a smaller school and still end up with the same, you know, job offer or wherever it is. Just kind of do your research and find out what schools have good engineering programs and like also kind of find out if they have a good recruiting um, system that, you know, find out if companies are actually going to that school to recruit. So that's an important thing. You know, if it's a good, you know, they have a solid foundation of engineering courses or engineering, um, yeah, engineering courses and also if companies are going there actively to recruit because that's very important um, but yeah I will just tell you go wherever you think you can excel if if you think okay for example I was when I uh, graduated high school I was gonna go to Georgia Tech like I got accepted that was where I was gonna go and then I got accepted to A&M and I was just like you know what Georgia Tech at that time was number four in engineering um, in the U.S. They were ranked four. I think A&M was 17 or 11 or something like that. I can't remember. And I was just thinking to myself, like, why would I go to Georgia Tech and, like, not... Because it's more competitive there. Why would I... At least I think it was. Why would I go there and not, ex you know, not be able to excel as much as I would if I went to Tech's A&M? You know, when I know for a fact that companies are heavily recruiting at both schools, like a 3.1 at Georgia Tech, and let's say you get like a 3.8 at A&M, like they're gonna hire the person from A&M that has a 3.8. It doesn't really matter what school you go to. At the end of the day, it's about you and your grades and how well you did in that school. So if you're gonna if you are going if you're trying to decide on a school and honestly from my experience i would just say go to the school that you think you have the most opportunity to excel as a person not the school is you know school is so great let me go there you might not it might not be the best option for you because you might just you might not compete well in that school and end up with like a 2.8 whereas if you went to a smaller school that was also good and known for their engineering program and got like a 3.5 you would have been way better off so anyways keep that in mind that's just something that I personally learned from my experience and whatnot so that's that hold on let me see how long this video is it's 13 minutes Whew. I'll probably go break this up so uh, the next question that I have here is uh, how many hours do you, re do you reckon you had to study to stay about the 3.0 mark because if I have to study more than 50 hours I'll probably just go to liberal arts or something. Um, it kind of really just depends on the class. Some classes are easier than others and some classes you just understand more, you know, you, you have a better understanding for for than others they don't, so they don't take as long of time to study for but I really can't give you like a concrete answer because there is no concrete answer you just you're gonna have to study I mean, a lot but you, you have a you think about it, you have a lot of time because you know it's like oh I have five exams in one day you know it's kind of some most of the time it's spread out so you have like at least a week or two to study for one or two exams so um, it just has. It just depends on your your um, time management skills. I'm going to go ahead and end this video right here. I'm gonna make a vid another video right now and talk more about. Um, this is gonna be more about tips in uh, doing well in school as well as like looking towards um, internships and uh, career fairs and resumes and things like that. So. I'll go ahead and record that video now and I'll end this one. So thank you so much for watching. If you are interested in um, you know more engineering videos, just make sure you like this video. Leave me comments down below as well as your questions because I will be making these videos and then um, you know answering more questions and stuff like that. So 
leave your comments down below. Um, you know, share this video with your friends that are engineering majors. It might help them. Uh, if they have questions as well, you know, let me know. And yeah, that's pretty much it. If you're interested in watching my next video, just go ahead and click around here. I'll try and put a link right here so that you just go right into it. And yeah, thanks so much for watching. Bye. There's a correct way of shaking someone's hand. You, especially you female, figure you, you girls out there, don't, don't shake like weak. Like don't, don't. This is not a, this is not a handshake. Like this is, don't, don't, don't shake with a weak hand. You gotta grip that stuff and shake. Give a firm.